Hi everyone, this is Caitlin Livingston, the Title III C Nutrition Program Manager. This is the quarterly reporting video to walk you through how to fill out a quarterly report for the C1 and C2 programs. If you have not yet watched the monthly invoice video, I would recommend doing that just because you obviously can't do a quarterly report without having your monthly invoices done. So it would be most helpful to understand that before going into the quarterly reports. First, I just wanted to get started. I'd like to do this first to show you where you can find the reporting on our website. So we are the community living section under the aging division. If you go to provider resources tab, you will find another tab for financial reports. This is where you can find all of the financial reports for all of the programs, um, including the monthly invoices that I showed you in that video. So here you'll see the C1 and C2 quarterly financial reports. These are the most recent fiscal year, and that's where you can always find the most updated reports. You'll click on it and it will download. I already have mine downloaded here. So we will go ahead and get started. Um, the C1 and C2 programs are pretty much identical aside from the fact that it says C1 versus C2. And then also the re reimbursement rates are different. So that'll affect your population amounts when you put your meal counts in. Um, so I'm not going to show you an example of C1 and C2. You can just use the C1 as a basic guideline and then apply those same principles to the C2 report. So go ahead and getting started. You'll see here, this is the fiscal cover page, and this is where you'll enter in all of your information that will populate to all of the other tabs for the reports for each quarter. You'll also see here just some basic instructions, um, kind of describes what the different sources of funding are and the reports that you'll need to complete this quarterly report. So I'm just gonna put in some general information um, so that you can see how this populates. Please make sure that you are entering it correctly because it does move on to every other page. Um, so we have done that and then you can see that it populates in the top left section. So again, please just make sure it's correct because it does move on to every single page from here on out. The next thing you'll see is there are different tabs for each quarter. Obviously, the first is the, the first tab is the first quarter, which is October, November, and December of the current fiscal year. You'll also see the due date. Um, it's always due on the 15th of each quarter, so the first quarter is January 15th. And then here, there's just a note that you need to make sure that you're including your SAMS reports, um, the year to date and the quarter with the nutrition education units and also the meal counts on there. Two other reports that you'll also need are the, um, the profit and loss statement for the quarter and the year to date profit and loss statement as well. So once you have those reports, then you can start compiling your information down in the expenditures and adjustments this quarter. You'll see here that this is blacked out and that's because it's the first quarter so we don't have a previous quarter to go off of. But in the future quarters, you'll have these numbers on the side will populate to the next quarter. So I'm just gonna put in some example numbers so you can see what that looks like. So here are the different expenditure sections and these all come from the monthly invoices as well. These are all categories that are listed on the monthly invoices. The first is program income and that's what was received and also expended. Your next, next is NSIP funds that were expended, then federal, state, not including WSSB, um, your local cash, your WSSB, in-kind, and other funding. Um, so just going through, I, you should know what these different columns are, but for example, your program income, $45, this should be your three months total expenditures and income for program income section from your monthly invoices, and it should also match to your profit and loss statement. Please triple check, double check, whatever check you have to, to make sure that your program income matches the three months totals from your invoices of October, November, December, and it also matches your profit and loss statement for program income received. The next section is NSIP funds, and this is what was expended, not received. So again, your profit and loss statement should have 
some type of column or line item of NSIP funds expended, and that needs to match to your three months invoices and your profit and loss statement. The federal funds and state funds expended are the exact same as NSIP. It's um, what you have reported on the monthly invoices as federal and state expended. Your federal and state expended do not need to match to your income on your profit and loss statement. Um, I know what I've paid you. I'm looking solely at your expenses for all of those three months combined. Local cash, again, it is the three months total based on your monthly invoices. Again, this does not need to match to the income on your profit and loss statement. Um, and it shouldn't necessarily because just because you've received $20,000 for an entire quarter doesn't mean that you have to expend it all. You can have that money and use it as needed. Uh, I'm solely just looking at how you're making up the difference of those meals if you're using local cash. WSSB is the exact same as described as local cash. Um, make sure that you have that allocated correctly and you are adding up your three months for WSSB as well. If in-kind is applicable for you, this is where you'll put that. Um, since in-kind does not have a dollar value, you might need to add it to your total expenses on the profit and loss statement. It's really helpful for me if you go ahead and do that yourself, um, but your in-kind should not be included as an expense on your profit and loss statement because it does not have a dollar value. If you have questions about that, feel free to call me and I can talk you through that. Um, I know in-kind can be kind of tricky for some people. It's tricky for me too. Um, but just know that if your total expenses don't match up to the monthly invoices, it might be because of that in-kind value. So if you go ahead and add that in, it's really helpful for me. Um, your other funds expended, these are non-matching just like in-kind as well. Just make sure that your three months, again, match to your quarterly report. You'll see here that it populates your total expenditures, so you don't have to worry about that. As I mentioned earlier, your total expenditures should match from the quarterly listed right here to what's on your profit and loss statement. The only exception would be in kind. So also this year, something new that I've done is putting nutrition education units for the quarter and the year to date um, on the quarterly report. So please make sure that your SAMS reports include nutrition education for the quarter and also the meals for the quarter and then you'll also need to have a separate report for education and meals for the year to date amount so whatever that is just go ahead and put that in there the next step would be to enter your eligible meals served so we'll just say this you had 456 eligible meals for the quarter make sure that you're looking at your subservice and it's the total for the sub for the service of the meals um, so your volunteer meals, your emergency meals, all of those will be included if you're looking at the service, not just the subservice sections. Once you put in your meal counts, you'll see it'll populate your federal and state dollars, and these are populated based on the reimbursement rates. Ideally, they'll match to the total here, because this is an example, it won't, um, but only in specific circumstances, if you've asked for less funding for a specific month, will it ever be less than the allowable amount. Um, next, you'll want to just type in your name as the director and then have your signature and then the date. If you are revising, please make sure you put the revised date and add revised in the date section um, just so it's helpful for me to know which copy I have received. If there's any additional comments that you need or to explain something to me, just put it in the provider comments. That way I know exactly what you're talking about. So moving on to the second quarter, you'll see here that everything populates from a previous quarter. So all of your previous quarter's cumulative expenditures will be listed here. Um, please do not go back and change your previous quarter. I will not accept copies that have previous quarters changed. Once your numbers from the quarter are submitted to me, I submit them to the fiscal manager and we cannot change them. Um, we can't go back. So. Don't even click on a tab from a previous quarter, just avoid that completely. If you made a mistake or found a mistake, you can make adjustments within the current quarter. So let's say your program income really was $50 from the last quarter and you need to adjust that $5 for this quarter. So let's say this month your, um, 
your program income was $65. So we'll just add that additional $5 in to make sure that the cumulative expenditures are what you actually did. And we correct for that adjustment and the mistake from the previous quarter. Um, nothing else really new here. We just want to make sure that your cumulative expenditures are matching to the profit and loss statement and also your three months of invoices, just like the first quarter. Um, Again, any type of adjustments you need to make, do it in the current quarter. Do not go back and change your previous quarters. Um, I do believe that is all I really have for the quarterly reports. Um, emphasis on matching to the profit and loss statement. I will call you if they're not correct. I will call you if the meal counts don't match the SAMS reports. Um, those are usually the biggest problems I see. So please just triple check that all that information is accurate before you submit it. Um, this year, something new is that we can now accept quarterly reports via email. So if you want to submit your reports to me to review them before you submit them to the WDH payments email, I'm more than willing to look them over. I know that there's a lot of information that goes into the quarterly reports. So um, if that's something you want me to do, I'm super happy to help you however I can. Um, I think that's all I have with the quarterly report. Um, if you have any other questions, again, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks, everyone.